Well, a very good evening and what a lovely day it's been and I'm glad you can all join me for this, I think it's now my fourth, possibly fifth Facebook Live and um, I think you can probably tell I'm rather enjoying doing the, um, the beautiful backdrops. Um, this one is, is a rose that I made. Um, I coloured it um, in Photoshop, so it's nice and purple. Did a couple of swirls, but I thought it was rather fitting um, this week. We had pink last week, we got purple this week. So I'm going to take my glasses off as I normally do because I'm so short-sighted. I can't actually see what my phone says and I can't see who's with me. So let's just have a look. So um, Sam says, Ian, high trouble. What does she mean, Ian? You're, you're the, you've never been on the naughty step. Never, never, never. Um, Claire has joined us. Claire Evans. Hi there, Claire. Um, we've got Joe Madelin who is watching. A very warm welcome to you, Joe. Glad you could join us. Um, we've obviously got um, a person called Samantha Thompson here. Like I said, I, do you know what? This person just keeps on cropping up on my Facebook lives. I don't know who it is. Um, so we've got Ian, very big um, hello to Ian. We've got Moisa, glad you can join us, Moisa. Uh, welcome. We've got Belinda, Belinda Basson, um, the, the artist who created the um, Lady Vagabond um, series for Stamperia. Very warm welcome to you. I think we said hello to um, Joe. Um, we've got Diane. Diane, how's your finger? I hope it's feeling a bit better and uh, the, the craft room is coming along really, really nicely in your garden. We've got Vina. Vina is all the way from Indonesia. Very warm welcome to you. Glad you could join us. Um, and then we've got that, that person called Samantha Thompson again and says, hello, my bestest friend. Hi there, Sam. And um, we've got Ian. Ian is here. Um, we've got Liz. Hi there, Liz. Glad you can join us. Hope you're well. And um, we've got, as I said before, um, one of my very, very old, and I don't mean old as in old, I mean because I've known her a long time. We've got Elaine, Elaine Gooby, who I used to work with um, a few years ago, I think it was over 10 years, but I think I've known her about 20 years, so a very warm welcome to you. And we've got Christiana, Christiana is from Germany, she's joining us as well. So we've got quite an international crew, the pressure is obviously on. We've got Maria, Maria is from Portugal, hi there, and we've got um, David, um, who is from Poland. Oh my gosh, so many people joining us this evening. Um, can't thank you uh, enough for joining me. I've um, got lots to do um, and hardly any time we've got. Uh, Nama, uh, now where's Nama from? Nama, where are you from? Where are you from? Are you from, is it Germany or is it Israel? I, I get confused. You have to let us know, you have to let us know. Let's have a look. Um, so let's have a look. Finger is on the mend, thank you, says Diane. I'm glad it is, because hopefully Diane is going to be um, either joining me on the Facebook Live, or indeed she's going to be sending in a video, because she's getting quite a flower professional now at making roses. So it'd be great to see her. We've got Anne. Oh, hi there, Anne. I know I know Anne. Um, she's from up near Tashaway in Lincoln. We've got Jen Baxter, looking forward to making some later. We've got Laura. Good evening, Laura. You're late. On the naughty step. On the naughty step. Only kidding. Only kidding. Glad, glad you could make it as well, Laura. So I'm going to put my glasses. Do you know what? It's really bad, isn't it? You take glasses off. I don't know if anyone else is like this, but you take glasses off and you can't find where you put them. Oh my gosh. Oh, we've got, we've got a little bit of design team reunion here going on um, between um, the people who used to be in some company, um, initials KSD. Now it passes me by as well. Um, who I used to work with in the past. And we've got um, Karen McCorgan. Hi there, Karen. Glad um, you're with us as well from Northern Ireland. Um, what's this? You're an international superstar now, Anthony. Well, I, I think um, there's a couple of us who um, do Facebook Lives who are truly international. Uh, let's have a look. Ha ha. I had an emergency teddy bear repair, says Laura. Oh my gosh. Hope his legs and his arms are now back safely in place, Laura. Diane, I will be definitely joining you on Facebook Live as soon as my room is finished. Tell your husband to get a move on, Diane. Right, um, I think that's it. Laura, hey, missus. Um, we've got Vina saying hi to Sam. What a friendly group we all are. We all are. Penny, I don't know if I said hello to you. I'm going to say hello to you now. Penny, uh, hello, and you're from America. Was it New York? I can't quite remember. And we've got Jean. Jean's actually found us. Hi there, Jean. Jean's from Scotland. Um, 
hope the weather is is good for you up in that neck of the woods right i have found my glasses now so i'll put them back on right so um we've got loads to do or should i say i've got loads to do you guys can just sit back relax possibly have a laugh at any mistakes that i make and um let's just have a good time so i'm just going to look over here and um play this and i'll be back in a moment Well, I never nearly come back to you then. I was reading all the comments. <laughs> I'm so nosy, aren't I? Um, we've got Julie Williamson. Um, it's mixed media, she says. What's that? What is the MM stand for in the background? Yeah, it's mixed media, or as my youngest son Hayden rightly said, Mr. Minis. So it can be anything you like it to be. Right, so here we are then um, on the, the desk. Oh, We'll, we'll, we'll zoom in because this is um, one of the cutters that we used on our earlier live that was at one o'clock and basically that was a little bit of a recap okay so what we're going to be using is cutters and we're also going to be using this clay this clay is absolutely phenomenal I I, I kid you not um, it's very very similar to hearty clay but it's slightly drier okay so the advantage of that is you can start making um, your flowers a little bit easier and quicker using this particular um, method now um i don't know if somebody could help me has jan banford um come on board i can't remember seeing her name there is a reason i ask let's have a look have we got mm, maybe not okay well let's see she, she may she may call in later right so um like i say this is the um the the clay that is really really good Okay, so it's an air drying clay made of paper pulp and also a glue. So how do we use it? What does it do? Right, so when you actually get it, it's going to be white. Okay, but it's really, really nice and easy to color because all you actually need to do is just get some water-based inks. So whether it is distress inks or indeed distress oxides, you are easily going to be able to color that. And literally, you just grab the clay. This one I have already colored, by the way. You just need to pop that clay directly onto the pad. It's not going to contaminate the pad any way whatsoever. And then you can just color your clay. It is really that easy. I'll just take a little bit out. That's if I can get it out of these bags. I was saying, I was, I was saying earlier, um, my sons having, or well, both my sons have to do COVID tests twice a week, and the amount of packaging that is wasted is unbelievable. But the actual, um, I don't know what it is, it's some sort of liquid or something, it comes in a little capsule, it comes in these bags. But these bags are actually really handy to actually store my coloured clay in. Apart from, I, I can't actually get the clay out. Okay, so here is the clay. Okay, so. As I mentioned, to actually colour it, all you need to do, take the top off there and then just literally, it's as simple as that. Okay, so we're just going to mix that one in, okay, to our already coloured clay. And you can see it just turning a slightly different shade of red. So what we've got here, let's have, let's have a look, see if I can keep up with the MM, what's that say? Mmm, very crumble. <laughs> In Scotland, it says, have a look. Hi, all hope you're well. Sunny in North East Scotland. I'm glad to hear that, June. Right, so we're just mixing up that clay. Okay, I'm just going to pop that aside. Now, like I say, earlier we used this particular cutter that, ge that gave us this type of flower. And the actual flower we made on the live earlier was this one here. Okay, so you can... Um, see that one if I hold it to this camera here 
there we go that's really 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 nice and it's, it's a big flower okay now if you actually want to do a small shall we say medium sized flower okay then what I would recommend is let me just I'm just hanging this flower back up <laughs> excuse me right what what you need is these cutters now these also create um, roses okay and it's a lot well, I, say, I say it's an easier process okay they're both easy processes but this is by far the easiest if you've never ever made a clay flower before in your life these are the ones to go with let's have a look now, Jen says is 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 where did that come from is FMM clay softer than hardy clay um, uh, Jen is exactly the same consistency okay it's exactly the same it's just a slightly drier clay um, we've got um, Deborah Jenkinson hi there Deborah glad you can join us this evening so yeah that's in, in answer to your question um, can you use food coloring with this clay please yes you can indeed um, Liz so it's, it's, it's very much identical in all the mediums you can actually use to actually color it with okay so we've got our clay we have our cutters so I'm just gonna make a little bit of space here you know true crafter messy messy space hey right so we're just gonna get our clay hi all who's this uh, that's Deborah yep so that right so we've got our clay we've got our non-stick mat now all of the products I'm going to be using on today's live are from FMM sugar craft okay there's their website I've just brought that up on screen for you if you actually go on there and you want um, a nice discount of 10% then when you come to the checkout just put in the code ants 10 and that would give you the discount of 10% right so we have our clay so first thing we need to do is roll it out now I'm the reason I'm actually holding this um, non-stick mat is because I'm on a glass mat underneath and it just slips absolutely everywhere so we're just gonna roll that like so okay now I do know that um, rolling pins have like little ends that you can put on them and that's to actually measure the thickness of the clay or indeed the fondant that you're actually rolling out if you really don't know what sort of like one millimeter is going to be like then I recommend you actually keep those ends on there but to be honest with you once you've made a couple of flowers you'll get to know the right thickness of clay okay so once we actually um, have this all done what you need to, to do then is just grab a cutter okay so the cutters as I say come in three different sizes so this is the big one that's available on its own or the other set is the medium and the small so obviously it goes without saying if you want a small rose go for this set but if you want a larger rose that we can be making this evening then go for the largest okay so the first thing I always say is when you're actually going to be using these if you've used them before okay just make sure there's no dry clay actually left in there because it will make your fresh clay that you're working with it would like put a lump in there and you don't really want to do that hi there Kath Kath has joined us as well so I, I should be waving um, south at you later Kath um, if, if Jan comes on board then um, I'll be waving south as well or is that she north no she's north she's north Kath Kath south Jan's north yeah so anyway we have a cutter we just simply place that onto the clay okay and then just quite simply just press all the way around okay and then just very carefully just pull the cutter up sometimes it will keep the clay in there there's no worries about that what you have left over okay just roll that back up into a ball and then just pop it back inside an airtight bag um, so let's see, a cat has nearly missed it. Oh, you'd have nearly been on the naughty step, cat. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here, and I hope you're feeling as, uh, as well. Right, you make it look so easy. Right, Christiana, okay, I'm going to be totally honest with you here, and I'm not just saying this, but it really is that easy, okay? Um, admittedly, when I first started um, with, with clay crafts, and it was making flowers only about a year ago I didn't think I'd be able to but seriously it is that easy so we're just going to pop the clay out so that is the shape that we actually have 
okay so where do we go from here because at the moment it doesn't look much like a rose does it okay so what you need is this and this is the firm foam former mat do you know what? when i'm on uh, demoing on tv i always dread saying those three words because i always think that i'm going to muddy it up but anyway it's the firm foam former mat this is the one you're going to be needing it's firm enough but not too soft if that makes sense so you need quite a high density on there for it to work nicely so let's have a look oh dear trouble is in the house everybody we've got Sharon. i'm going to name shame sharon ward is in the house dare i say um her daughter laura she just despairs she really does <laughs> only joking only joking right so and as you can see she, she always calls me aunt tony as well puts an aunt and only she is cheeky but we look we love her really right um so back to our live okay Sh yeah sharon will be on the naughty step without a doubt and by the way um penny was from minnesota i do believe she said earlier right okay so we have this okay we're just going to change camera angles let's see if i've got the right one here mm, oh do you know what we go to this one as well okay so just so you can see what we're actually doing so i'm going to be rolling this ball tool actually over the edge okay so we're doing this now the reason i'm um rolling and not dragging is because if i drag it will actually tear the clay so you don't want to do that so just simply roll the ball tool over the edge of the clay okay and you can see straight away that the clay is sort of um, warping to a certain extent that's exactly what we want the clay now looks this uh, like yummy marzipan do you know what there is a story penny um, and like I say this clay is very similar to um, hearty clay but um, when I run the design team for for that company we, we won't mention this evening um, one of the design team members was making some claws using a mold out of the clay and she worked behind a bar and she had all of these claws actually in a bowl okay and a, this guy come up to her and he ordered a drink she went to pour his drink in the meantime he thought that these claws were actually like um, a crisp so he actually ate one and this design team member messaged me quite frantic saying oh my god anthony somebody has eaten a clay claw is he gonna is this guy gonna be all right well the answer was yes obviously you shouldn't eat the clay but it is non-toxic he probably had a bit of a stomach ache but you know these these things happen these things happen let's have a look what's going on in the chat was it Laura um, Sharon who are you kidding uh, Laura I was just about to say that too hi there Marcy Marcy has joined us as well so Marcy we are making roses using the different cutting system this time this is the called the easiest rose ever and believe me if you've never ever made a flower before this is the one that you want to go with to start with okay so you can see i'm just going around every single petal just rolling okay there we go we're just rolling that clay out. now the thicker the clay the longer or the more stretch you're actually going to get in the clay so if you want a particularly big flower then i'd recommend you go for like a, a millimeter plus clay when you actually cut it but if you just want a standard type flower then just go to like below the millimeter and you'll be good to go right so oh dear we're, we're having a <laughs> we're on a, a bit of an argy bargy in the Sharon you, you always make such, such a uh, such a fuss with people that um, they, 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 they all seem to be ganging up on you that's not fair is it you know I, I, I would help but um, I'm making a flower I'm afraid uh, <laughs> right so there we go so you can see it's great that we're not doing this so every single petal is even either that's a really important thing because when you actually look at a rose a natural rose that is none of those petals are all the same size or shape okay so there we go that is our very very first one okay so what i recommend okay and this is something i've, I've found um, from an experience and that is basically i'm gonna let that one dry for a little bit okay because then 
if you let that dry a little bit, when you actually do the next process that's actually rolling this up, what you actually then get are is the clay is drier and then the petals won't actually stick to one another, if that makes sense. Right, let's just um, go over. I don't know if Jan is in the house or not, but um, last, it wasn't last week, it was about three weeks ago, we did, uh, well, I did a Facebook Live and I made on there some Cosmos flowers. So this is um, a spotlight on Jan. <music> Well, like I said, I don't know if Jan's actually with us, but these are some flowers that she's actually made using the cutters from FMM Clay Craft. And I do believe these are Jan's very first flowers. And look how amazing they are. And Christiane, you know, you were saying, oh, you make it look so easy, Anthony. But seriously, once you've mastered the clay, and it's not going to take you long to master that clay, you are going to get the most amazing results. So as you can see, Jan has had an absolute blast. Um, she perfected the center really, really easily. And you can just have so, so much fun with all of these. So Jan, um, thank you very, very much for sending these pitches in. Really, really much appreciated. I'm not sure, like I say, if you're actually watching the live today, but um, you know, I'm sure everyone now is in awe of your fantastic flowers that you've made because there is without a doubt no going wrong where you use the cutters from FMM. Now, if you want to have a look at um, my YouTube channel, um, you'll actually find on there that I actually have all of those um, uh, uh, demonstrations from previous Facebook Lives. I've actually uploaded all those. So please head on over to my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is allwsyoutube.com forward slash C forward slash mixed media arts and crafts. Um, go over there, you'll have a look and I'm constantly uploading videos. There's a couple of new ones here and uh, there's going to be one I'm going to be showing you a little bit later because that's actually decorating a pot using a verdigris type paint effect. So lots of video content there for you to have a look at and somewhere along the line, there we go, just this one here. This is um, the video on how to make a cosmos flower, I do believe. Let's have a look. Have we got a cosmos flower? Yeah, well, that's me doing some rusty stuff there. But it, it's it's somewhere on there, and this is how to do the centre part of that flower. So please head on over there, and you can see how to make a cosmos flower exactly the same as Jan did. So again, thank you very much to Jan for um, bringing that uh, the photos to me. Okay, don't uh, don't try the claw with the resin. That's that's a very good point, um, Ian. Yeah, you definitely don't want to do that. Right. So getting back to our live now. Okay, we have cut one of these out now. Depending how full a flower you actually wanted to make. Okay, um, then it depends how many you actually then cut out. So let's have a look. A beautiful. Wow. First attempt. Fantastic. Yeah, it, it really, really was, um, Kath. Um, like I say, the flowers are really nice and easy to make. So that is layer number one. I already have some. So we're going to do a blue Peter. OK, like, like we always do. Now, I've put this inside a damp box. OK, just so it keeps all of our layers Nice and well. We've got Kirsty. Kirsty's joined us. Hi there, Kirsty. Glad you can join us. One of the Power Techs um, tutors. So I'm going to pop this one aside because it's the one we've just made. So the, the, the clay is still a little bit damp. And then I'm going to bring out one of these ones. So as I mentioned before, all you need to do to actually make this is literally you have your shape. You've done all the frilling around the edge using the, the ball tool. And we're just going to then fold that in half okay just fold it in half like so then just apply a little bit of pressure down to this part here okay so press all the way down okay 
and then using another one of FMM's tools. So this is the knife tool and the, the pointy tool. <laughs> I'm sure it's not called that, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean? So we're just going to lift that up from one end and then we're going to start rolling like so. So it's quite tight in the middle. OK, and then once you've done about two turns of the clay, then all you're going to be needing then is to lift that up and then we're applying pressure down the bottom part. OK, not the top part, because we don't want to wrap and squash all of those petals. OK, so pop that onto the mat, as you can see, and then just continually twist around. OK, so that is layer one. And the great thing about this, um, as I was saying, if you've never, ever used um, clay before to make flowers, then I really, really would recommend that you do it this way, because unlike the other method that I showed at one o'clock, you have to pop um, a piece of wire in there and you have to put it on a stand, keep on coming back to it. You know, yes, it does work and it creates beautiful roses. But if you've never, ever tried making a rose, then this is by far the easiest option. So I'm just going to pop that aside for the moment. And then we're going to bring in the second one that we have pre-cut. OK, and if there's any questions, please fire away in the comments and um, I will try to answer them as I go along. OK, so I'm just going to pop that. And once we've folded that in half, as we've done there, then we are just going to basically pop that right on top. So if, if I can just bring this camera in, hopefully it's going to zoom in this way. Yeah, there we go. OK, so that's where the join is, just there. And then what we need to do is literally just pop the other petal, OK, about halfway over that one. So it's about there. OK, and again, just loosely just wrap that round. OK, so there we go. And as you can see, already that's starting to look like a rose. So Christiana, my question is, are you going to have a go at this? It, as you can see, it's I'm you know, I'm really not trying to make it look simple. It just really is that easy. So let's have a look. So, Diane, um, it is so, so easy. Give it a try. Yep, yeah, it absolutely is, Diane. You know, I'll be honest with you. Once you have mastered just using the clay in general, you are going to be away. And by the way, that the clay can be used if you use molds. OK, so it will be used um, for that as well. OK, so there we go. It's getting bigger, this roses. But you know what? We cut out that one as well, didn't we? So I'm going to make it even bigger. OK, so just pop that on there again. We're just going to fold that over. And that's the really great thing is you can just keep on making this rose really, really large or you can make it almost like a bud. So it's really tiny. So it is a very, very versatile cut. So again, just pop that on there and then just lay that over. So it's about let's have a look about halfway about there. And then just simply just spin that round. OK, so as you can see, you haven't got to fiddle around. It's got a nice stable bottom for want of a better term okay it's not going to roll anywhere so now what do you do okay well this is what you need to do so we're just going to swap cameras so we have the large one here so what you need to do is basically where this is you you need to start by going around okay so let's just pop it on the large, large screen so you can see that. So I'm just applying pressure, OK, just to the bottom part. And you can see I'm not squidging all at once. I'm doing it gently. I'm doing it gently because that's the most important thing. If you are literally just to squeeze that as it is, OK, the centre part will just sort of like come out and it would be a little bit of a mess. But, you know, what? it doesn't really matter because even if you get to that stage, you can scrumple all the clay up and have another go. I'll just roll it out and have another go. So let's have a look. I need a stable bottom, <laughs> says Kath. Kath, I knew we could count on you. <laughs> so there we go. You can see now what I'm sort of making is it's like a wine glass um, underneath. So just keep on going. OK. And then once you get to about that level, OK, 
you can then literally just spin that off okay so now now I, I, I know washi tape has come back in fashion but you know what I still don't use it so I just use the little washi tape reel like that to actually pop that on there and that works really really nicely okay so there we go so the clay that you had left over from the bottom there just pop that in the bag okay uh, <laughs> Laura says she needs a stable bottom too oh my gosh <laughs> what did I say <laughs> right so there we go we have our clay flour all ready to go but at the moment it's pretty much in a tight bud so what do we do to open it up it's quite simple you can either use your fingers okay like so and you can see I'm literally just opening all those petals up all right so it's not going to all fall apart don't worry but just sort of like evenly go around the flower okay like that and then just this is where this knife tool comes in so so handy so we're just going to go in there I'm just going to almost bend that back on itself so we can lower these petals like so. OK, and you can just keep on going. OK, so just keep, keep, keep on going. And before you know it, you're going to create that beautiful full rose. And because, you know, I mentioned earlier that if you cut your shapes, then leave them to dry a little bit. That is by far the best method because then at this stage when all the petals are really really clustered together they're not going to stick if this was completely wet clay straight from the packet you know nine times out of ten these petals will stick so it's, it's just knowing about when to use the clay at the right time so there we go i'm just going to keep on just popping those and there's loads in there this is a pretty big um, rows I've actually made here okay as I said it's up to you how many um, layers that you actually want to cut out so I think this one was this was four okay so this is the largest one available cutter available from the easiest rows ever cutter range and it was four layers so it's it's down to you what type of um, size rows that you do and also because the clay comes to you in white then it's really nice and easy to color so it's just using um, a water-based product similar to distress inks um, and you're going to be good to go even just like water colors that's still going to color it so there you go you can just keep on going around there you know I could, I could spend all night doing that rose then what you can do is just give it a bit more of a squeeze what does what does Kath say she says we will find a stable bottom shop and go together. <laughs> that sounds like a plan, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, dear me. What did I say? So now I'm just going around again, OK, and I'm just squeezing a little bit more of that clay. But it's best just to do it in stages rather than all one go at a time. OK, so just keep on going and you can see how little clay is actually used to make a flower because now I'm going round and round. You can see all this clay is also going to be popped into the bag again. It's going to be um, reused at a later date. So again, I'm just going to take that one off. And that is our rose. How easy was that? So three different sizes to choose from, two different packs. And they're all available from the FMM website. Would recommend you get the tools and especially the firm foam format because to make like any craft um, item you need the right tools for the right job and as I've mentioned the clay by itself can be used in molds whether it's um, Prima molds or Zuri molds you name whatever mold is going to work now if you go into my um, YouTube channel there is a really big tip that I've shown you on there and that's to actually if you're going to be using this clay or any um, paper air drying clay actually in a mold and just pop it in the freezer afterwards so there we go that is our rose okay so if you're interested in flower making you may be interested in this
Yeah, so if you're enjoying the video and the content, then please do press the share button and share it with friends, etc. So Vina, um, she says, beautiful rose. It's easier than the one in your video last week. It absolutely is, but you can see it is a complete different look. Let's actually put, let me just pop that one aside, okay? So this rose here is the one that we made with the five petal cutter. So that is the five petal cutter. And then you've got this one here that is made of the easiest rose cutter. So they are they they look very different as well. You know, each one is pretty beautiful in its own right. But as I said, if you've never ever done roses before, then the easiest rose cutter is the one to go for. Let me just have a look at some of the comments that we have here. So I have um, this pose mold for a few years, never used it, um, possibly give it a go for my passion collection for Stamperia. That would look absolutely fantastic, Jean. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, your lettering there that we used, a, a, a mold or did that with cutters? Right, Claire, that is actually on the FMM website as well. That actually was a cutter and I used this clay to actually do that. And this is a soft and strong polymer air drying clay. That is the one that I find best if you're going to be doing things like lettering. There is a video actually on my YouTube channel that actually shows you how um, to create that entire um, project. So let's have a look. Marcia says, may have a go with um, Jajama's Blooming Challenge. Oh, that's a good one then. Yeah, have a go with that without a doubt. Um, yeah, you're very welcome, um, Claire. So like I say, my YouTube channel is um, available somewhere. Um, <laughs> So let's have a look. Ooh, I'm, I'm trying to look for where I have the info, which is this one here. So this is my YouTube channel. Please head on over there. I'm always uploading um, new content. Um, hopefully it's something that's going to interest you. It's not only flowers. There is also mixed media projects on there as well. So, you know, please head on over there and you'll see loads of stuff. Right, so back to today's live. Now, when you've actually wired all of these flowers, and and also just just to to say, this flower is probably going to sort of like dry overnight. So if you want to colour it further, as you'll see, I have done with this one. I've just gone round with some distress ink. Okay, make sure that you actually have left it overnight to dry properly before you do the colouring. But to colour the rose. It's really, really easy. Here we go. So this time around, we're going to be using the um, Distress Oxide version of exactly the same colour, the picked raspberry. OK, so just take the lid off and we're going to be using the foam applicator. Now, it's up to you here. You can, as I often do, just go into the lid. There's just so you don't have too much colour on there at once. And then just literally brush that in. The clay is very flexible even once it's dry, so you don't need to worry too much about that. And you can see how quick this process is compared to the paintbrush technique. It's entirely up to you which one you want to use. Okay, This one is pretty nice. I think it's probably my preference, but do you know what? It's always nice to try something different just to see if you are going to get a different type of a look. So just keep on going round all the way. Okay, and you can see that's really beautiful. It's just picking up on the petals on the very edge there. I'm just gonna really, really keep on going over those, really darken them up a little bit, okay? just to add, just to give it a real nice contrast between the edge of the petals and the centres, okay. And even on the centre bit there, you can keep on just going around to your heart's content until you're happy with the sort of look that you're achieving. So just go really adding, adding the depth of colour to those beautiful petals of that rose. Just keep on going round and round and round. And you can see this is by far the, um, the quickest of the colouring processes between the two. 
we're just going to flick that round. We're going to do the underside just as we did the other. If you've got it wide like I have here, just mind your eyes when you're doing the colouring on the underside. Okay, you don't want to stab yourself in the eye in the process. So just go all the way round and just a little bit of colour. So you can see the calyx there that we did earlier and that's just got a little bit of that varnish on. The pentart varnish, the clear varnish. So just keep on going all the way around. You can see how quick, simple but how effective this is. Okay. And there are, so this is probably more random than the paintbrush as well, so I think that's probably why I prefer the overall look to it. So let's have a look at that. Whoa, look at that. So that's the sort of effect you're going to be achieving with that one. So let's just bring in our other one there. So you can see, you know, there's not much difference in it at the moment. Obviously I haven't sprayed this one. So let's just cover up our ink pad like so. And then I'm just going to use our water spritzer again and just make sure there we go give that a good soaking okay so it's really really nice and wet and again we're just going to let that one dry and then once that one's dry we're going to compare the two roses and paint techniques so you can see that was um, how to to paint the the roses now what can the roses actually be used for well yes you can be using them in any type of project this one is just a plaque so this is using the medium size um, cutter from FMM. And you'll probably notice there's a little bit of a shimmer going on there. We've got some glossy accents, so it looks like um, water droplets on the, the roses. It just adds a little bit more interest to it. So you can be using them for that. So large pieces or small pieces, entirely up to you. You can make them look a little bit more antique by, I think the actual colour there was the, um, the good old the good old one vintage photo. You can't go wrong with that colour, can you? Absolutely perfect. So uh, Jean, you were saying about your Stamperia and your romantic collection. You know, that is going to work really, really well for something like that. Now, if you're using the other clay, which is the polymer clay, then you can be uh, creating something like this. This is just um, a block of wood that's, um, you know, um, the, the, the trunk of a tree that's been cut and again I put the glossy accents on there this is using the polymer clay so it's a lot more substantial than the other one now obviously once you've actually got to this stage and you've done all of your wiring okay um, you know what would you do with them after the wiring well I'm just going to show you a really quick video on how I wired it if you want the full wiring video then again go over to my um, YouTube channel and have a look at last week's Facebook live doing the other rows and I'll explain in full there but this is a sped up version of how to wire um, it's this particular rose here <music> both all wired now so the three leaves there just very very slightly different from one another you know you can keep on manipulating those because they are all wired but that is the the rose in its entirety so you can see that's how to make them completely freestanding completely all beautifully wired so let's just have a look at them a little bit in more detail so this one here this is the one with the five petal cutter to create that rather large rose head there and then this is the easiest rose ever cutter and again this one gives a slightly more delicate type look more open flower to it but that is the difference between the two okay so you it's up to you which one that you like i think they're both really pretty in their own right and just adding all of that colour, those um, the detail to the petals there, it just adds to the realism. I always say, you know, they don't have to be botanically correct. It's all about having fun creating with the clay and the cutters from 
FMM Sugar Craft. So, th so just cutting that one short there a little bit. So, like I say, once you've actually wired them, um, and it is a process to start with, but you will really become accustomed to wiring your flowers very, very quickly. And as I mentioned, because the, the clay is actually white, you can be using any um, form of um, watercolouring um, paints or inks to actually colour the clay. So maybe you want them purple or you want them blue. You can do whatever colour rose you like. But then maybe you want to be um, decorating a vase. Now this is using sort of like um, a verdigris type of effect. Now I've actually done a full tutorial on this one which is also on my um, YouTube channel and it's really really easy. This one is actually, I don't know if anyone can actually guess what this is actually from. Let's have a look. Um, this, this is actually from a peanut butter jar okay and then I just used some beautiful molds that are from Prima and again I used the soft then strong clay. The reason I did that is because I know this is going to be handled quite a bit. Also it may get wet as well. So where the bright and light clay as I mentioned earlier that is actually uh, made from paper pulp and glue. If that does come into contact with water as also the roses here if they come into contact with water then they will go all mushy so maybe that's when you actually want to use a soft and strong if it's going to come into contact with water or moisture at a later date okay so just bear that in mind but where I did the mouldings on here I did actually use the soft and strong air drying polymer clay it works really really um, in the same way as the other clay Again, you can colour that using any type of acrylic paints that you already have in your stash. Or, you know, if you're finding that certain paints aren't sticking, then just go over with a gesso and then that's going to work really nicely for you as well. So like I say, the um, painting of this verdigris, you can see it's, it's, it's that beautiful aged sort of look. Head on over to my YouTube channel, but here's another sped up video of how I painted this.
see that's how easy and I do mean it really is nice and easy to create a beautiful verdigris effect with the beautiful roses that you can make as well so um I think it was who, who was asking yeah it was Claire the colors are actually used there Claire I'm just going to pop these roses out of the way so just bear with me one moment pop those on the floor right so these are the three colors that actually make up the verdigris okay this was a really really cheap um, acrylic paint from I think it was home bargains in actual fact called sap green we've got these from um, art that an art acrylic and this is from what company is this from I can't remember what it's actually from it has actually got um, is it called Talons or something or Talons Talons that's the one Talons so they sell this particular brand that is just basically a turquoise color and then I just mix the black and there's a little bit of white in there but that I find uh, those three colors there are the perfect three to make that verdigris type look so you can also mix by the way acrylic paints actually in with the clay as well if you should so wish to do that right um let me just have a look at um what else i can tell you because let's have a look yeah so as i was mentioning if you head over to the fmm website you can get 10 percent off of all of the products not these ones so it's, it's the cutters the um tools and when you get there just make sure you do this to order from FMM, go to their website, www.fmmsugarcraft.com. Once it's there, you'll be able to browse the many cutters and clays available. Once you've found what you're looking for, simply type in the quantity and click on the Add to Cart button. When you finally finish shopping, click on the icon on the top right of your screen. This will take you to the checkout screen. Once at the checkout screen, type out your contact and address details. And remember to look for the gift card or discount code area where you will type in ANTS10 for a 10% discount on the value of your shopping cart. Just remember to press the apply button. Once applied, your discount will be shown along with the monetary value that you've saved. If the value of your order is over £20, you'll get free postage and packaging. However, if you wish, you can pay extra to have your parcel tracked at the final point in the checkout process. Finally decide your payment method, whether it be credit card or PayPal. Happy shopping! So that's how simple it is to go onto the FMM website and be sure to put the code ANTS10. Now I do know that they have had a 25% discount which is even better so then you can't apply an extra 10% to that but if you just want to buy the clay, like I say the clay is a fantastic price anyway but you will not get the 25% off if they're still offering that on their website. Go for the 10% discount so that's using the code ANTS10. So I really hope you've enjoyed um, the video or the Facebook live tonight showing you the technique of making a beautiful rose and you know Christiana and Vina all of you please please have a go um, Kath has said it's easy um, and we've also got Diane who said it easy because do you know what it's not just me who makes look easy they really really are nice and easy to make so um, I'm just going to have a quick look at any comments. Do you know what? There's none tonight. That's really good, isn't it? Um, I hope you've all enjoyed the Facebook Live anyway. I'm going to need these on because I, I need to go to the end screen afterwards, which is this one here. Okay, I'll, t I'll take these off. So, um, Kath says, uh, thank you, Anthony. That was a great demo, and I'm going to have a go. Be safe. Yeah, be safe yourself as well, Kath. Hope you... Um, well again soon I know um, poor Kath has been in hospital recently so um, we all send you our best wishes um, Anne says thank you Ant you're more than welcome Anne um, hope you have a go as well and you never know um, Jo um, Shannon may be um, getting her um, workshops up and running again soon so she may well invite me so if you're in contact with her you know just give her a gentle nudge um, Ian, you're more than welcome. Um, so I think that's just about wrapped it up for this evening. Like I say, oh, and Joe, oh, great demonstrations. Thank you so much, Joe. Uh, Kath saying thanks as well. Um, another great live, says Laura. I'll pay you later. Um, I see your mum's gone. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? No, don't, don't answer that. Don't answer that. Don't commit. Don't commit. But um, 
have a gr oh I mean, she's still about <laughs> well, just as well I didn't say anything bad Sharon you're always very welcome um, Nama thank you so much for joining us um, and Claire great live uh, uh, you're you're more than welcome so like I say the YouTube channel link if you didn't get it from the video it is actually in the description of this um, YouTube like this YouTube this Facebook live so head up there and it is there for you to click on like I say I, I'm uploading loads of stuff as I go along Jean says thank you thank you Jean for joining us glad you could actually find us this week so do you know what I'm not going to rattle on anymore all I'm going to do is wish you a great rest of the week hope the sun is shining for the weekend and I know that my two sons are going to be hogging the TV on Saturday because ah, that blooming thing called football's on ah dearie me uh, I could do a live then but you know what I don't think the viewing figures would be that great so please Stay safe, happy crafting, and I'll see you again very shortly. Oh, before I go, <laughs> I better tell you, I'm actually on the, the telly box next um, Wednesday. So that's the 7th of July. I'll be on with FMM. Um, I've got the, let's have a look. I think it's the, um, the Dahlia Cutter, along with the um, Rose Cutter that I did from the 1 p.m. Um, Facebook Live today. A couple of other cutters there as well. We've got the Kaylee, we've got the Rosies. You know, just 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 come 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 along for the inspiration, and um, hopefully you'll you'll enjoy that as well. So um, Sharon says I'm here. Sorry, I'm late. I'll have to watch later. Oh, Jan, bless you. Do you know I? <laughs> I actually um, I premiered I premiered your um, Cosmos flowers. Seriously, they are absolutely amazing. I'm sure everyone in the um, the live today can you have a big thumbs up or hearts for um, Jan's uh, Cosmos flower because it was absolutely fantastic, and they were honestly her very first um, tryouts as well. She showed us um, a couple of pictures as we were going, but yeah, Jan absolutely fantastic so please go and have a look at live I'll be putting this live up onto YouTube a little bit later but you know what I could talk all night uh, but I'm not going to so have um, a safe rest of the week and take care and happy crafting thanks for watching